Hey everyone and welcome to my very first tutorial for Brawl Modding. My very first PSA and Brawl Box tutorial. Um, PSA is Project Smash Attacks for any of you that, that don't know. Now, <laughs> let me start by quickly saying that these videos will lack any sort of professionalism whatsoever. So don't be expecting some high quality stuff because, you know, I'm just kind of doing these fun and to help the guys at KCMM who want to learn a bit more about PSA. So basically these will just be a sort of fairly in-depth-ish tu um, tutorials about Brawl Box and PSA and hopefully they'll show you guys some new techniques that you probably won't find in other video tutorials that'll make your PSA is awesome. So in this video I'm just starting off with showing you guys the files that you'll need. I have them conveniently put in two RAR files in the description. If you need a um, RAR extractor, you can use. You can use seven. Sorry about that. Sorry for the delay. Um, you can use seven zip, or WinRAR, or Free Extract Frog. But any of those RARs will work. RAR extractors will work. So basically, all you want to do is extract both of these files to a folder of your choice. I got my folder name as tutorial stuff, and then you can delete the RARs if you want. Now, when you double click the Brawl Box one, You'll come up with all these folders. So Brawlbox is the exe program that you want to run, the the main one. You need all these in all. Of the, you need all of these in the same folder, otherwise this will not run properly. And then there's also an older version of Brawlbox. This version is you'll only ever need it if you get better at animating and you need to reduce the file size of a file because this is the only one that allows you to clean up animations and reduce file size but this is the main version of Brawlbox you want because it's the easiest to animate with and it's one of the most up-to-date versions and then also in here we have PSA this time we only have two folders data and smash tags you need this data folder with this folder so that um, the events show up otherwise nothing will show up when you open it and again this is another exe program Okay, so we'll start off with Brawl Box and open that up. And Brawl uses kind of files called packed files, basically. As you can see here, this is for my beautiful Joe mod that I'm currently working on at the moment. There are four files Fit Captain, which is a pack file, Fit Captain 00, which is also a pack file, Fit Captain 00 again, but this one is a PCS file, and Fit Captain Motion, etc which is also a pack file. Um, these two are the costume files. This one is moveset and this one is animations. That's only to put it in a really, really basic way. Um, really basic sort of explanation. They, all of them do a bit more, quite a bit more than that. But for Brawl Box, you, it works for all of these. But as far as animations go, you'll only need this and this and maybe this but you probably won't use that because you can just use this so open up fit captain 00pack you'll come up with this the arc file and then the brez files for the model and texture and shield model now preview the model in with control p now when you first start it's zoomed in really far to zoom out right click on the screen and use the mouse wheel to zoom out also, if you don't have a mouse and you like use a laptop or something, then you can use, I believe, you can numlock it and then do page down and page up, which should scroll it. And now you can right click to turn and if you hold control, the, con the turn radius is bigger, which is more useful. Now I like to um, set my animations to the right because that is where the default brawl, vault, ugh, view for Brawl is. 
so I think it's easiest to enemy from the right. And now as you can see there are these four tabs that pop in and pop out. It's fairly self-explanatory what's in them. Polygons, like the sort of shapes of the character, see that's his body. These, if you uncheck these, they just go invisible in Brawl Box. They don't actually go invisible in game, so they're just there for show really. They sometimes you can get stuff out of the way and like with Sonic, he has a sphere constantly there, so you can uncheck this and it gets out of the way. Um, these are very important. These are all the bones that the character has, and they're all named and labelled. So it's fairly obvious which is which. These ones are fingers, thumb, scarf for um, Beautiful Joe, who's over Captain Falcon. Some of them have weird names though, like uh, I'm not too sure. These are just textures, again, you won't really need to fiddle with that. And here is where you need to load a file that has animation files in it. The main file, sometimes the the main file is the fit cap, motion etc. pack for the character. Sometimes this will, if the articles have anim animations, but almost all the time it will be this. So open that up, and you can see that, you can see it has all the character's animations here. Wait one is like the initial one when they're waiting. And then you got run. Ooh. And loop loop the animation. Now if you see here, you have speed and frame. Frame is the number of frames the animation is, and speed is how fast it is in Brawlbox. It's a bit laggy because um I'm using the screen recorder right now, but the speed for Brawl default by default is 60 frames per second, you, so you want to keep it on that all, all times. As for frame, there are 60 frames in one second because it runs at 60 FPS, so you should make your animations to suit that length of time. Like, a fast character would probably want animations mostly less than a second, like as you can see here because it's the basic animations for the AAA combo. All of them are about 30-ish frames, 20 to, 20 to 40 frames to be exact. So yeah, that's basically it. And here is um, how you move all the bones. So if I select, say, his leg, and one of the great features about the newer version of Ballbox is how it has rotatable bones, like so. You can just click the orb and rotate it and do crazy things. You can make Joe's legs spin around like a helicopter. Uh, you don't want to do that. Um, and that's basically it for Ballbox. There's not much more I could show. Nope. Now onto PSA. This will be a bit more in-depth because this is where I'm more at home turf. Okay, so with PSA, however, the only files that you can't that support PSA are the fit, um, the regular just fitcharacter.pack files, so fitcaptain.pack. And this is for Beautiful Joe, but it's obviously still a work in progress. Now as you can see, there are these big tabs here. Action event and attributes. Action event is basically, literally where the entire move set is set. So all the moves, like waiting, attacking, doing random stuff like throwing items, literally everything will be here. And attributes is stuff that affects their walking speed, running speed, jumping height and speed, other way around, um, how mobile they are in the air, how fast they fall, the number of jumps they have, their, their weight, and their landing lag for their aerials, that's the other main thing that is affected. Now, as you can see in the action events, there are the three main tabs, specials, sub-actions, and subroutines. I'll start with sub-actions first. This is basically, like, where the meat of the moveset is. It's where, literally, all the moves are. Sub-actions um, are basically what a character will do when they reach 
this animation. So in the weight one, he technically does nothing in the main bit, but as you can see here, in the event list, there are four things. Main, graphics, sound effects, and other. Main is where you'll want to put most of your stuff. Graphics is obviously for where you generate graphic effects and stuff. Sound effects is for sound, and other is for stuff like slope effects and rumbles, uh, and you won't really need to bother too much with that. Then you have this button here called animation flags, and each of these has a different effect. The only ones you'll probably ever, ever need to use are loop and moves character. The other ones are either unknown or not that useful. Or not really needed. Then you have specials, which obviously these are done differently. These are set out differently to regular moves. They're a bit complex to explain at the moment, but I will do a more in-depth tutorial on how they work. Basically, when, uh, when you get to a special, it will go to an action, and it will carry out this action, and usually this action will, like, jump to a sub-action. Like here you see, this is for Falcon Punch, so it will jump to 1C, sub-action 1CE, which also reminds me, um, every character will have almost this, will have pretty much the same setup from number 0 to number 1CD. This is all in hexadecimal, so you better get used to it. You have to learn how to sort of understand hex. It's not that hard once you get get to grips with it, translating decimal to hexadecimal. So, one CD is spy cloak for pretty much everybody. It doesn't really do much, so don't really t pay attention. But once you get to one CE, that's where the special starts. Special start. This is for Falcon Punch, and to my understanding, 1DO is to the reverse falcon punch or either that or it's the no it's the aerial falcon punch now as you can see here oh no this isn't the best example let's go to side b for a better example as you can see here this also has a change action to 118 action 118 basically that's for the side b um it will have change actions for stuff that you know sort of is in multiple stages so for the side b he does his dash, and then if he hits someone, he does the uppercut in the air and the meteor smash... Oh, sorry, uppercut on the ground, or meteor smash in the air. So... Go away! So let's go back to 113, which is what it was. So, nor so the normal one is 1d2 and 1d4 on the ground. The starting one, and in the air. And then, but if he hits the attack... Then he'll go to this one, which is the uppercut, or this one in the air, which is the meteor smash. So that's basically that for the specials. Again, I'll explain in more detail in another tutorial. Now, we come to... I don't know why I clicked my fingers there, but I just did. Now we come to subroutines. These basically allow you to make another one of these offsets. You see these five number offset here? For the special air S is 19 A E O. This basically allows you to create another one. It's very handy if for saving file space and stuff like that, basically. And creating, yeah, that's the main thing, saving file space. So if I go to create new, you see this hexadecimal number here, 228 A C, and we also have this little thing called an event pop up. Now, these buttons down here um, have to do with the event. Add, adds a new one. Modify, modifies the one selected. Remove, removes it. These control the position, so if I were to add a few more, this one would move up, down, and up. And then copy, paste, obviously allows you to copy and paste. Now, if I double click, which is the equivalent of modify, you get this little box called modify event, which allows you to obviously modify the event. And there's a load of events to choose from, so you've got timers, ifs and ands and elses and end ifs, changing actions, changing sub actions, offensive collisions, graphics, sound effects, damaging, eclipse, momentum changing, article stuff, variables, item, 
involvement, interrupts, and there's just loads of stuff to choose from. So once you um, get used to that, you'll um, know a lot more about it. Um, that's basically the navigation tutorial. Once the next tutorial will probably be showing you how to do a follow-up move. So basically, a move that will do something else after you either press a button or connect the hitbox. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this guide and I'll see you next time.